I liked Ace Magic's S1 Mini PC when I reviewed it previously. The screen gimmick is interesting and performance was great, but this time we're checking it out with a different CPU and hopefully there aren't any surprises lurking inside. We'll go through it all right after this message. EaseUS To Do Backup Home is an award-winning backup solution to keep your data safe. Backup, clone, upgrade, or transfer your system easily, and protect it from ransomware. To Do Backup Home even supports backing up to the cloud. Trial it for free with a link in the video description. Ace Magic's S1 became infamous for its pre-installed Windows OS with malware on it, putting every Chinese brand under suspicion. And I was surprised that I missed it in my review considering my rigorous tests. So after hearing about it, I fired up the previous S1 Mini and it turns out Windows Defender had been turned off completely on my review unit. GG, as the kids say. When I turned Defender back on, it found the malware on its first scan. You might be wondering, have things changed? Honestly, I would have been more surprised if things hadn't changed. But the good news is that it looks like Ace Magic has learnt their lesson coming out with a mea culpa message, and I can confirm that this S1 I received doesn't have any malware and viruses on it. At least, not that Defender or malware bytes could pick up. And yes, I checked for rootkits as well. I'd say things have now been patched up, but losing consumer trust is easier than earning it, and I'll let you make up your own mind. So with that out of the way, let's get to the actual review. The S1 has an interesting gimmick for a budget PC. It's got a 1.9 inch LCD screen displaying the time or other stats from the PC. Previously, we looked at the Intel N95 model, but this time we're checking out the N100, which is an 80 US dollar jump from the N95 on the official website. I can't seem to find it on Amazon. Anyway, is it worth the extra dollars? That's what we'll answer with a direct comparison. Intel's N100 is a similar 4 core CPU with UHD graphics that performs better than the N95 when the power limit is maxed out, cooling is up to snuff, and DDR5 is on the table, which unfortunately isn't a common combination. In the box of the S1 is the mini PC, magnetic vertical stand, power supply, HDMI, and manual. You can use the mini horizontally or vertically as the 170 by 320 pixel resolution LCD can be changed to fit either orientation. Both ways look fine, I just prefer vertical minis as they take up less desk space. The S1 is made from good quality plastic. It's solid and has a unique design. There's a little RGB lighting strip on the front, which is customizable with the included Windows app. USB ports are conveniently placed on top of the unit if you're using it vertically. They are a pair of USB 3 5 gigabit and USB 2. This mini is powered by a barrel jack connector and has dual HDMI 2.0 for two 4K60 displays along with dual gigabit LAN for networking. Finally, there's an audio jack. After all the N100 minis with USB-C to reach my desk lately, it's definitely noticeable that it's missing here. Access to storage and memory is as easy as it gets thanks to the magnetic panel. And inside there are two 2280 M.2 slots. One slot is running at Gen 3 X2 speed with included NVMe SSD, and the other is M.2 SATA. No cooling for either drive, unfortunately. Even some kind of mesh on the magnetic lid instead of a plastic window would have been a better option. Like the N95 model, the N100 is running a single DDR4 3200 stick since Alder Lake N only supports single channel memory, and the S1 uses a Realtek 8852BE chip for Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth connectivity. Windows 11 Pro is included and has been modified. I can understand that the image is modified to include the LCD screen and RGB software, but why is Google Chrome thrown into the mix? Not everyone uses Chrome, I certainly don't, and I don't want it there. Something else that's changed is that the LCD screen software doesn't boot automatically on startup like it did on my previous S1. So first time you turn it on, there's just an Ace Magic logo on the screen and nothing else shows. To get the stat screen, you need to run the software each time Windows boots. And after that, the clock will show on the LCD when the Mini is shut down or powered on again, unless you remove the power completely. This makes its main selling point less useful. Luckily, there's a guide to get the LCD app to load on startup automatically with administrative privileges, which I'll link in the video description. 
as it's too long to go through in this video. Anyway, this should have been done on the manufacturer side. As an alternative to Windows, Ubuntu worked without any problems straight off the USB. Except for the RGB strip and LCD screen, which require the Windows apps to function properly. In the Windows LCD app, you can switch from portrait to landscape to match your orientation and choose one of the four themes. You can also make your own. Go to Customize and choose your background image. Yes, anything you want. And then select which of the available metrics you want to display. Also, I should mention it doesn't look like you can turn off the LCD screen. Ever. It even stays on when the mini is powered off unless you pull the plug. The RGB light strip on the other hand can be shut off. Okay, so let's see how the Ace Magic S1 N100 model holds up in the benchmarks against the N95. In single core, well, it's around the same as the N95. Not much between it and the higher ups. In multi core, around the same as the N95 again, which is on the slower side of the N100 stack. Video encoding, again, around the same result. The 3D Mark DX11 graphics benchmark came up with an identical score and 3D Mark DX12 was almost the same. So according to the synthetic benchmarks, the S1 N100 performs almost exactly the same as the N95. Um, okay. The included Gen 3 NVMe SSD drive saturates the X2 speed and sequential reads and writes as you'd expect from an X4 drive. Now, let's put the two S1s head to head in some game tests. GTA 5 performed quite a bit better on the N95, which I did not expect at all. Valorant performed a bit better on the N100. An emulation was about the same. So for $80 less, it's clear the S1 Intel N95 model is the one to get. Here are the extra BIOS options that might be useful to you. Idle power draw is almost the same. Max power draw came in a little lower than the N95. Max CPU temp is identical which is great since the cooling in the S1 is top notch and one of the lowest results out of all the older Lake N minis. This low temp also comes with low fan noise. It's not the quietest out there, but still impressive when taken together with a CPU temp. SSD maximum temperature didn't reach as high as the previous S1, but allowing some airflow in a future revision would definitely help, as would a heatsink. Okay, so overall, the Ace Magic S1 N100 has top-notch CPU cooling. It's a good-looking mini PC and has a nice magnetic vertical stand. The LCD screen is either useful or useless to you, depending on your usage case. And I'm happy to say, Windows comes malware-free this time. There are two full-sized M.2 slots for storage, but there's no cooling on the M.2 storage drives. You can't turn off the LCD screen at all, and there's no Linux support for the display. The LCD software doesn't start automatically like it used to, and performance isn't any better than the N95, making the price tag a problem. Whether Ace Magic's S1 is for you depends entirely on its gimmick. There are plenty of great budget mini PCs around that don't have the screen to choose from. The S1 also comes in an Intel N97 flavor, which I'd expect to perform better on the graphics side. But I no longer make recommendations based on hypotheticals, since as you saw with this one, it clearly didn't outperform the N95 like you'd expect. In any case, I've linked the S1 in the video description if you're interested. Affiliate sales are the main form of support that keeps this channel going. If you are curious about Intel's N97, I really recommend checking out this review, which goes over it in detail. It's a really interesting CPU. Cheers!